When I was sitting there in year 10, I was just like, how am I going to remember all of this? Like, it's actually really hard. My number one tip for physics, if you want a grade 9, you need to stop doing this. Let's get straight into the video. So in 2018, I got a grade 9 in biology, chemistry and physics. And I was absolutely shocked with this result. With sciences, it seems like the content is endless and that there's no way to memorize it all. But I'm here to tell you that there actually is a way and this is how I did it. So this video will basically be telling you how to get a grade nine in science, whether you're doing triple science or combined science. So before we get started, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this. And also comment down below of what video you'd like to see next. So this video is gonna be split into three parts. The first part is going to be the best way to understand and memorize all of the content. The second part is going to be on how to use exam questions to maximize your grades and the third part is going to be on specific tips and exam technique for each science. As I said before with sciences it seems like there's so much content to remember and like honestly when I was sitting there in year 10 I was just like how am I going to remember all of this like it's actually really hard. A lot of reasons why people don't do as well in sciences is because they don't cover everything so if you don't cover everything and you don't cover a specific topic or a specific subtopic you're basically leaving yourself an extreme weakness. Let's say that there's there's a two page spread exam question on this topic you're actually finished like there's nothing you can do not covering everything in the specification is basically like a knight who doesn't have any armor on his chest like it doesn't make sense you're just leaving yourself open to attack so how do you go about memorizing all of this content let me tell you how so the first tip to memorize any content is to understand it honestly if you don't understand something it's gonna be much harder to memorize it whereas if you understand something that understanding will stay with you forever. So I really recommend that you go through the specification and see what things stand out to you and what things you haven't done because you really need to cover those before the exam. For the topics that you are especially finding hard, I really recommend that you watch videos on the topic. I feel like that's the best way to understand science because you can read your textbook over and over and over again, but some things just don't click. Like for me, physics, especially towards the end, the textbook was just doing absolute rubbish. Like I didn't understand anything. Like it was actually shocking but once I watched the video on it I was like okay it's not that hard so honestly don't rely just on textbooks and revision guides because you're just leaving yourself limited and these videos are really helpful so let me talk about the videos that I really recommend well, let me tell you about this website so this website is called my GCC science so this video is not even sponsored but my GCC science was like almost solely responsible for the grade 9 like it was just so amazing like I, I can't even express how good it was it had videos on every single subtopic in every science and it had exam questions for every subtopic some of the questions in those exam booklets that they had came up in my actual exam so honestly don't take this website for granted you do have to pay for it though and it is an investment so if you're at the start of year 10 i really recommend this or the start of year 11 but if you only have like four weeks to go i don't know if there's a point in buying it now so if you don't want to pay for a subscription you guys know who i'm going to talk about free science lessons like his videos are amazing and they cover pretty much everything so that is a really good option for last minute revision as well. So when you watch these videos, the aim is to be able to explain these concepts to a five year old. Like that sounds really dumb, but honestly, if you can explain it to a five year old, then you truly understand it because you can simplify it and you can just explain it in a way that makes sense to them. That means it makes sense to you and that validates that you've covered the topic. As well as this, you can teach your friends topics as well because that also helps you to understand and memorize things. Okay, so now you understand the content. How do you memorize it? So what I recommend for this is to make effective flashcards and when I say effective please listen to me because some of you guys be making flashcards for no reason like some of you guys will literally get your notes and then put it on a flashcard literally copy the exact same thing maybe summarize it a little bit then put on a flashcard and highlight it like if you want to grade nine you need to stop doing this because you're wasting time what i mean by effective flashcards is that the front has to be a question and then the back has to be the answer and you have to use the specification for this you can't be making notes on your flashcards it's just a waste of time like if you want to read your notes then read your notes you don't need to transfer it to a flashcard so let me use an example from the biology mark scheme if we look at the organization topic it basically says this bile is made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder it is alkaline to neutralize the hydrochloric acid from the stomach it also emulsifies fat to form small droplets which increases the surface area the alkaline conditions and the large surface area increase the rate of fat breakdown by lipase ask yourself this what would you put in the front of the flashcard what i would personally do is if i was really struggling with this topic i would make this into two flashcards the first flashcard would say what is the function of bowel is alkaline so it neutralizes the stomach hydrochloric acid 
and also it emulsifies fats into small droplets and then this increases the breakdown by lipase i'll write how i would write it on a flashcard here so when you write a flashcard you want to make sure that it has the least amount of words possible this ensures that it goes into your head easily if you test yourself on an entire topic in one flashcard it's just too overwhelming and you're not going to want to do this flashcard so be very mindful about how you make them and then my second question will probably be where is bile stored and where is bile released into and then you can just use the textbook to help you with this as well so to write the answers for these flashcards they might not always be in the specification so what i recommend that you do is use your notes the videos or your revision guide to write the answer so something i forgot to mention is that in the run-up for exams i made flashcards on word so the way that i did this is that i basically transformed the specification into questions so every single point would be a question so that i could cover every single thing and then on the back i would put the answer and i just found this really helpful because it's just really quick and it's just a way for you to just actively remember things and I really recommend this if you are trying to cram a topic really quickly even though cramming is not advisable if you have a topic and you know that you don't know anything and you don't have time to make the normal flashcards then I really recommend this method and this is my final tip on memorizing content please do not try to make flashcards and everything you don't have time and some things are just like you know it like you know what a mitochondria does you know what the nucleus does don't need to make flashcards on everything because if you look at the specification it's like 80 pages long like if you made a flashcard on every single point in the specification you'd be there forever so just be mindful about this okay so now let's move on to stage two which is exam questions and how to use them to maximize your grade if you haven't watched this video over here I actually don't know what you're doing like you need to go and jump onto that video because a lot of people have found it helpful and it has over a hundred thousand views right now so be sure to jump on that video but I'm basically going to be telling you about how to use exam questions and I really talked about it in detail in this video but let me just reiterate so in this video I basically tell you to make a list of all of your subjects in the order of which ones you find the hardest and then within those subjects I recommended that you make a list of the topics and also in the order of weakness and if you have this list basically this is the list that you have to focus your exam questions on so when you do exam questions do not be doing it on topics that you enjoy like do not be focusing all of your time on doing questions about the atom you know what's in the atom you know how to work out all of the things in that topic so it's comforting doing things that you understand but if you really want a grade 9 you can't be doing that you actually have to focus on your weaknesses because at the end of the day the things that catches people out is the things that they didn't practice I've seen many times that they've repeated the same questions in past papers so it's painful but in this case pain is good like you really need to start doing exam questions that push you that that make you think more than you usually do because this is preparing you for your exam for your exam you have no idea what's going to come up you have no idea how they're going to test you so if you just focus on being tested in your revision then when it comes to the exam you're not going to be scared you're going to be prepared for anything and you're just going to be ready to smash that exam okay so let me tell you about this website if you guys don't know this website get to know this website it's called physics and math tutor i'm sure you've already heard of it but it basically has all of the exam questions of all of the topics of every single example don't be complaining that you have nothing to do in your revision sessions because you have all of these questions to complete it might not be possible for everyone but the goal is to complete all of the questions on that website for your exam board this will make you prepared for anything like there's nothing beyond these questions that they can ask you so if you have the time and you're in year 10 start to make doing these questions your little homework to yourself because they will really really help you my GCSE science also has questions on every single subtopic as well so I found that really helpful to focus on my weaknesses within a topic so if you're gonna buy a subscription bear that in mind because it's really really helpful and I think they also have like quizzes now so that's actually really helpful as well the most important thing about these exam questions is that if you get things right that's good but we're not worried about what you got right like the focus is on what you got wrong so when you get a question wrong you need to understand why you got it wrong did you get it wrong because you didn't understand the question did you get it wrong because you don't know the content or did you just make a mistake you need to understand what you did wrong if you want to improve you can't just be doing these questions and then writing the right answer in another pen and then closing it and leaving it at that because that's not going to help you if you don't understand the content then you need to go and watch those videos you need to go to your teacher like stop being prideful like just go to your teacher i promise you they won't care and they won't remember this in like three months 
you're the one who's gonna remember it in your exam when you can actually understand the question if it comes up again. If you didn't know the content, go back to those flashcards, maybe use the exam question answers for your flashcards so you can update them to have all of the keywords because that's really helpful as well. And if you made a mistake, you need to understand why you made a mistake and you need to bear that in mind when you have questions like that in the future. If there's a type of question that you keep constantly getting wrong, you need to make that question a flashcard basically because that question could potentially come up in your exam and you don't want to be making that same mistake because that will be so annoying. Let's talk about biology for a quick sec. So when you're doing exam questions for biology and you get it wrong, even though your answer was correct but you didn't use the keywords that they wanted you to use, just mark it as incorrect and memorize those keywords, make it a flashcard because these keywords will be the bane of your existence if you don't crack them down now. It is so annoying to lose marks even though you know and understand the content but just because you didn't phrase it in the right way. So just start to memorize where these keywords are important and get ready to use them in your exam. Let's move on to part three where I'm going to be given tips and tricks on each science and also exam technique. Now let's talk about biology because a lot of people find biology easy and biology the content is not that bad i feel like in terms of content physics is definitely the worst the thing about biology is that there's so much content like it just goes on and on and on like it's just too much sometimes but as I said before, you need to use those flashcards and you need to make it a priority to understand the basics because with biology, the questions are not clear cut. The first few questions are gonna be very explicit. Like they're gonna ask you stuff like name four stages of mitosis, but after the start of the paper, those questions are not clear cut. So if you understand the basics and you do as many exam questions as possible, you're basically preparing yourself to be ready for anything. So the unique thing about GCSE biology is that it basically forces you to apply yourself the most. The other science are more clear cut like the questions actually explicitly ask you what to do but these ones are more like you have to infer based on your own knowledge so they give situations that look new but they're actually not new like you have all of the content you need to answer that question in your head it's just that it requires you to do more thinking so when you practice you're exposing yourself to more questions and you're increasing the likelihood of these questions coming up in your exam they might be a bit different it might be phrased a bit differently but ultimately they'll be like the same thing so when you're faced with an unknown situation keep free reading the question and try to understand what topic it's coming from if you find out what topic it's from you have to think about the basics of this topic and then you can apply this to the question for example let's look at this question over here it's basically about chicken eggs they put in acid to dissolve the shell and then they put into distilled water what do you think this is about like what does it look like to you? Like, what does it remind you of? So for me personally, I think about osmosis, I think about those potatoes, that experiment. I think that's a required practical, so you should probably know about it anyways. But that's basically what it's asking you. Like, all of this extra, like, dissolving the egg in the acid, it's not really relevant. Like, they just want you to think about osmosis. They're probably gonna ask you to calculate the percentage difference. It's just stuff that you've already done. So when you're faced with these really scary questions, just think of what does it actually remind you of? Like, what have you done in lesson that it reminds you of? And how is this relevant to the question? Let's talk about chemistry. And chemistry was actually not that bad for me, but it does take a lot of practice, that's what I can say. The unique thing about chemistry is that their questions repeat themselves a lot. Like, there's only so much they can ask you in chemistry, especially with these moral calculations, these titrations, like, these are gonna come up every single year. If you don't get these down now, then I actually don't know for you because these come up every single year so if you do as many questions as you can and you answer them correctly then you're basically prepared for all of those calculation questions and these questions tend to be six markers five markers so you really want to get these down if you want those easy marks also before you start to calculate anything like anything make sure all of the units are correct because sometimes they tend to put them in other units and you have to convert them if you don't convert them then your whole question is wrong and you waste the time so Pay a careful mind to the units. With chemistry, you need to cherish physics and maths tutor. If you do these questions, you're basically prepared for anything, as I said before. There's no doubt that you'll be prepared for almost every single question. When you're doing exam questions, you need to focus on your weak points because these weak points are definitely gonna catch you up in the exam. For me, I think it was half equations and electrolysis, like, it just didn't really click for me like I don't know why but it didn't but after a lot of practice I understood it fully and I was prepared for any question that would come up you really don't want to be scared of any topic in chemistry like some of them when you open the textbook they look scary but honestly when you actually get to understand it it's not that bad and the questions are really not that intimidating anymore finally let's talk about my arch nemesis which was physics my first tip for physics is to watch as many videos as you can because some of these concepts and the way they explain it in the textbook 
it's not right it's not right at all like you really need to watch videos even if you have to watch videos from like five different channels to understand it do it because some of these topics are just so hard to grasp like it's just like what are you even talking about and how is that even relevant to me physics can literally just be gibberish so really focus on your weak points and really try to understand them if you don't understand them after watching all of these videos go to your teacher like just ask the questions guys you need to stop having shame because when it comes to it asking for help is less embarrassing than getting a bad grade because you didn't want to ask for help so just ask for help when you need it because if you don't really understand the information you won't be able to apply that information to the questions in the exam and you're basically gonna end up leaving things empty and you never want to do that in the exam my number one tip for physics is to get your maths right when i tell you get your maths right get your maths right because these questions could be potentially easy marks compared to the, all of the other questions and they come up every single time like I promise you there's gonna be many maths questions in your exam and if you know all of the equations and how to rearrange them you can get these really easy marks no problem so when you practice doing physics questions especially these maths questions what you want to be able to do is basically recognize what equation you have to use from the units that they use alone if you practice enough you'll be able to understand what equations you have to use simply from the information that they give you and the units that they give you and you'll just find it really easy because once you do this all you have to do is rearrange the equation and then plug the numbers in it's really not that hard the reasons that these questions catch people out is because they just overthink it and they think they have to do more than they actually have to and that's not the case i know that in the exams in 2022 you guys don't need to know any of the equations because they're going to give you a sheet but for the other years you guys need to know these equations off by heart because if you don't know the equation then like that's it like the whole question is going to be blank so the way i memorized all of the equations was i basically made it a game with my friends so for each equation i made it a flashcard so let me give you an example the front of the flashcard would say write down the equation which links current potential difference and resistance then on the back it would have the equations and all of the units the way that i made this a game is that i basically spread all of these flashcards out the person who wins the game is basically the person who ends up with the most cards so the other person playing has to pick a card for you and then you have to get the equation right to get the card if you don't get the equation right then they have to and then if they get the equation right they get the cards so the aim was to get the most cards at the end but ultimately it was wasn't about winning it was just about making this easy and fun because these equations like if you just sit down and like try to memorize them by yourself it's gonna be long it's gonna be boring but if you're competitive and you make it a little game then you're more likely to remember these in the long run so I really recommend doing this game with your friends and make sure you're good at rearranging equations because you're probably gonna have to do this in your exam and I'm gonna explain what I mean by this by doing an exam question so the question says the energy transferred to the water in 100 seconds was 155,000 joules the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram Celsius. Then it said determine the mass of water and to give your answers to two significant figures. And they also said to use figure 10. Okay, so let's look at figure 10. Figure 10 basically shows the temperature difference. So let's just work that out. Um, it ends up at 100 and it starts at 22. So the difference between that is 78. So that's the change in temperature. You should be looking at what equation you should be using for this. If it isn't clear already, you should be using the E equals MC and then the change in temperature equation. And then to determine the mass, we have to do is rearrange this equation to make M the subject and it's very easy. So you just want to divide both sides by C and the change in temperature. So then you'll get this. Now to actually work out the mass, what you have to do now is plug them in before you want to plug in all the information make sure it's in the right unit so the joules is correct the specific heat capacity is correct and the temperature is also in celsius so that's fine so now i'm just going to use the calculator and i get 0.4578 and that goes on and then i just have to round it to two significant figures so then i get 0.46 that's essentially five marks that i got from just doing basic maths like if you look at the stuff that you have to do in gcse maths this is nothing compared to that and if you can get these right for all of the maths questions you're basically getting yourselves all of those easy marks and you're increasing your likelihood of getting a grade nine that shows how easy these questions can be all you have to do is recognize the units and then plug them into the equation and that's it so honestly don't find these questions intimidating just practice them as much as you can as with any subject and you'll be good so that's pretty much it for this video guys i really hope it helped you and if it did be sure to give a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye